Frank West for Smash. So this one's basically like the most like jokey fun whatever entry I just threw in there for laughs. But it's because like I've seen basically nobody say this like not all openly around the mainstream or anywhere else unless if you look for it. And I guess it makes sense since it doesn't really make much sense to put him in the game. But you know, there's of course people who want it. And he has technically been on a Nintendo console even if it is just chop till you drop. But yeah, when I looked at it, I guess there surprisingly was a bit more like ideas and shit for him. But I don't know, it's kind of interesting, I guess. He is at least in Marvel vs. Capcom. But still, I don't really see, like, even as much support for him in Smash Brothers as, like, even Daroke, who I wish would be put in, but probably won't ever. Dakota's importance. So I've mentioned Dakota from the hidden intro before, as well as beta story differences in earlier parts. Well, some old promotional work shows her with Frank, implying that she would have had a major role in the story. Possibly indicating that maybe her mother still dies and Frank ends up finding her and has to protect her. And maybe there's some other stuff going on with her that involves like deeper roles in the plot. But yeah, it's interesting to think that she was going to be a major character who was always there in the game. But stuff ended up changing and now she's just relegated to being in this little intro that not even everybody knows about. And kind of ends up being this big like remnant left of beta stuff from the game. It's possible though that ideas for her were reused for Katie in the second game. Cliff is related to Connie and Dakota. Speaking of them, once you defeat Cliff in the game, he shows a picture of his family to Frank as he dies. And people have looked at this image and theorized it to be Connie and Dakota from the hidden intro. So there's like even more deeper stuff going on with Dakota here. And if it is like them as it's theorized, then that adds even more sad and depressing subtext to everything. But yeah, one more interesting note is that while Dakota never appears in Frank's journal, like as a profile, she's apparently inside the game's manual. Vampire Panic Shared Similarities Vampire Panic is a Japan-only game that came out on the PS2 a bit before Dead Rising was out. And this game actually shares a lot of similarities with Dead Rising, like with a sort of like a time system being there. And the big thing is that you can gather and escort villagers to safety, as you see here, and they even have their own health bars and everything that kind of resemble Dead Rising. And you can give them items to defend themselves with and heal themselves with to defend themselves from the vampire. Like, really the only big major difference with the two games, aside from like switching characters and shit, is like the setting and the fact that it's vampires instead of zombies. Uh, did you know gaming recently did a video on this game and they also mentioned these comparisons? And it's pretty interesting to see this, like, once obscure game pop up and turn out to feel a lot like another more popular game. And I feel like there's also just too many similarities for it to be a coincidence. Stories themes are still strongly true today, if not more so. So I'm going to be saying all of this assuming that you've already played through the game and you remember the whole deal with what Carlito was saying, what the zombies represent, and how it ends, and Frank trying to get his stuff out to the media, and what caused the zombie outbreak and the shit with the meat department. But I feel like that while it was relevant then, this is like even more like weighted now. And it has a deal with like people suffering over immoral practices and producing bad food and people getting fed that shit. And just to make money and stuff and etc. before learning and making more selfless and thought out decisions on this. It's just more quick and easy without putting much regard towards like humanity and the planet. And while it's like relevant then of course it's even more so as like the population is still growing and the environment's getting worse, and diseases aren't being handled well, like, think of the wasps, and 
capitalism is just corrupting shit more and more and getting more powerful. And people aren't really caring about this or even knowing as secrets are still being kept and lies are just flat out being told on quote-unquote news that use like 500 quotations there, media getting more mindlessly believed in shit, especially in the United States. And depending on how cynical you are, you could say that people especially have been choosing selfishness and ignorance for their own gain much more than wanting to keep like the planet and human decency at check elsewhere over the past few years as this video comes out. Like, it's gone really fucking bad, and it's possible that it's just gonna get even worse as less of, like, shit starts changing. But you almost want to have doubts just because of how awful people have been. I mean, we could be screwed, who knows. Sorry that this got kind of really dark and cynical and ranty and shit at the end, but, I mean, it's important to know about that stuff just in general, even with the connection to the game. And it's the last entry on the iceberg, so I guess you could have expected it to go someplace. But yeah, that does it for this short series, and thank you then. There will be more content like this in the future after a while. Thanks.